This is me. You're probably wondering how I got into this situation. Just kidding. Can you beat a Pokemon Nuzlocke using only Pokemon that start with the letter D? I sure hope so. I'll be attempting this on Pokemon White version, which means I will only have Gen 5 Pokemon available to me. I've done similar challenges using only A, B, and C Pokemon, and I'll be using the same Hardcore Nuzlocke rule set for this challenge. As a quick summary, you can only catch the first Pokemon on each route. If a Pokemon faints, it must be released. I can't overlevel above the gym leader's highest level. I can't use items in battle, and I must play on set mode. For the special rules, I can only catch a Pokemon if its species name begins with the letter D, or it evolves into a Pokemon that does. If my first encounter is a non-D Pokemon or a duplicate, I can re-roll until I get one. However, I can't evolve a Pokemon if no further evolutions start with the letter D. So, I can take and use Oshawott because it will evolve into Duat, but I can never evolve Duat into a Samurott. Alright, let's do this. Pokemon White using only D Pokemon. I name myself D and literally get a gift Pokemon to start. I select Oshawott as my starter since it can evolve into Duat. I defeat Bianca and barely beat Charon. My Oshawott has a modest nature, which increases his best statistic, which is special attack. I give him the name Downpour. Downpour has to hold it down by himself for now, since there aren't many D Pokemon early in this game. I also meet this mysterious person, who I learn is named N. Hey, my name is D, so he must be doing one of these specific letter Nuzlocks too. Oh. Well, never mind then. There are certain ways that I can combat this, like massive level advantages for rival fights. But because I'm playing with hardcore rules, overleveling for the gym fight is not an option. The first gym is designed to be tough, as the gym leader depends on what Pokemon you select as your starter. Since I picked Oshawott, I get Sillin and his grass Pokemon. Well, his one grass Pokemon, since he also has Lillipup. Lillipup starts with a crit flinch. What a way to kick things off! Basically nothing in this fight is going well for me, and this should be the easy part. Downpour is able to take out Lillipup on his deathbed. Pansage comes out and ends attempt number one. Downpour number two has the exact opposite nature of downpour number one. And that's okay, because Oshawott's base attack is actually pretty good too. This time, I'm faster than Lillipup, so I can take it out with a good amount of health left. My high attack also means that Tackle will do more against Pansage. Pansage uses Workup to increase his attack and special attack. Then he uses Vine Whip to get me to low health. One more Vine Whip and it's all over for me. At this point, I'm starting to get concerned that this is going to be more challenging than I anticipated. On attempt number 3, Silin uses Workup twice and can definitely kill me with one Vine Whip. For some reason though, he just keeps using Workup and I'm able to kill Pansage. Did I get incredibly lucky and likely avoid hours of grinding, planning, and heartbreak? Probably, but let's pretend I'm just really good at this game and move on. Downpour has a naive nature, which increases speed and lowers special defense. So he's strong with both physical and special moves. I deal with some Team Plasma stuff in the Dream Yard, and then Downpour evolves into Duat. Again, since Samurott doesn't start with a D, Downpour will be a Duat forever. At this point, the game also blocks you if you don't have two Pokemon. So I have to use this Lillipup for this double battle, but I release it right after. However, I can get my first actual encounter in Wellspring Cave. By running into Dust Clouds, I can catch a Drillbur. I catch her and name her Double Agent. She has a lonely nature, which is probably the best nature for Drillbur. It raises attack and lowers defense. She also has the Sand Rush ability, but there shouldn't be too many instances where that's used. The second gym leader is Lenora and her normal type Pokemon. Herdier is first, and lowers Double Agent's attack with Intimidate. I still go for Dig, as Herdier lowers my defense. I go for it again, and luckily Double Agent hits the range and kills Herdier. Lenora's final Pokemon is Watchog. Her Watchog knows Stab Retaliate, which does so much damage the turn after a team member dies. Double Agent's defense is minus one and is just terrible anyway. Downpour can take a Retaliate, so I switch, but Watchhog just uses Leer. Retaliate will now only kill me if it crits. So, since I'm faster, I go for two Razor Shells, which is enough to knock out Watchhog and give me my second badge. 
I now have access to Route 4 and can get my next encounter, Darumaka. We all know that Darumaka and Darmanitan are great, but this might be my single most critical encounter in the whole game. I catch her and name her Dharma. Dharma has a lax nature, which isn't great, but isn't actively terrible. The third gym leader is Berg, and my team definitely has the type advantage here. Dharma knocks out Whirlipede with one Fire Punch, and on Dwebble, I switch into Downpour. One Razor Shell takes it out. On Leveny, I switch back to Dharma and take a String Shot. Being slower doesn't matter though, because I take a Razor Leaf no problem and finish the fight with a Fire Punch. Three badges down. I can also go to the Desert Resort and catch a Dwebble, who I name Dungeness. Next, N decides to have a very serious conversation with me in the absolute stupidest place possible. In preparation for the fourth gym, I pre-poison Dharma. This is because she knows Facade, which doubles in power if you have a status condition. Elisa is the fourth gym leader, and she has electric types. First, she sends out an Emolga, and I send out Dharma. Dharma takes a Volt Switch, and Elisa goes to her other Emolga. Dharma takes the hit and then launches a boosted facade to kill that Amulga. Dharma is dead if I stay in, so I go to Double Agent. It's a free switch, since Double Agent can't be hit by Volt Switch. Amulga hits me with an Aerial Ace as I go for Rock Tomb. Rock Tomb is a two-hit KO, but more importantly, it lowers Amulga's speed. So now I'm faster and can kill with Rock Tomb. Last is Zebstrika. I risk a crit to stay in, but Double Agent holds on the Flame Charge. I attack with Dig, which kills Zebstrika and gets us our fourth badge. We can now get our next encounter on Route 5, which is Solosis, who evolves into Duosion. I catch him and name him Dos Blobs. I also go through Driftvale City to get to Route 6 and catch a Deerling. I name him Doe. You know, Doe, a deer, a female deer? Definitely the perfect name for this one. Next up is Clay and his ground type Pokemon. Clay can be notoriously hard, so I'm hoping I have the right team composition. Downpour kicks us off with a Water Pulse, which Oko's Krokorok. Clay's ace, Excadrill, comes out next. Excadrill boosts his attack and accuracy, and I hit a Water Pulse. That will be a two-hit KO, but I also proc a Confusion. Excadrill hits through Confusion, but I know Downpour will survive any attack. I use Water Pulse to knock out Excadrill. Finally, Clay sends out Palpitoad, so I switch into my grass Pokemon, Doe. Doe can take all of Palpitoad's hits. Unfortunately, I soon realize that I forgot to put a grass move on Deerling. Since Doe can take all of the attacks, I set up a Leech Seed. Then, it's a slow, drown out process to knock down Palpitoad's health. Eventually, Clay heals up, but I continue going. Finally, Doe knocks out Palpitoad, and in a cruel twist of fate, learns a grass move on level up. Thanks, game! I can also catch a Ducklet on the Driftvale Drawbridge. I name mine Drake. Dose Blobs evolves into Duosion, and now I have to come to terms with the real issue of this challenge. All seven of my Pokemon are not in their final evolution, but I'm only allowed to evolve one of them. I have to plan for fights where I know my Pokemon have bad base statistics, and I still have to consider all the hardcore Nuzlocke rules. The one Pokemon who can evolve is Dharma, and thank god. That's why Darmanitan is such a critical piece of this team. Skyla is the next gym leader, and I am extremely concerned about her Swana. The only way I can get an electric move is by buying the Thunder TM in the Icarus City Pokemart. However, the NPCs won't let me get that far until I beat Skyla. So I don't have any electric moves for this fight. So. I came up with this extremely stupid plan. Step 1. Dwebble to hit KO's Swoobat. Swoobat goes for Amnesia, which changes nothing, and Dungeness hits her Rock Slide. Skyla heals up as Dungeness fails the secret bonus step. Don't miss your Rock Slide! Luckily, Swoobat goes for Amnesia again, and Dungeness hits Rock Slide. Skyla heals up again, and I go for an X Scissor. Swoobat uses Acrobatics, which is totally fine, and Dungeness knocks out Swoobat. Now onto step two, Sack the Crab. Thanks for your sacrifice, little guy. This is necessary for step number three, Retaliation. Because a team member died the previous turn, Retaliate has a base 140 power. This strong move knocks Swana's health below half. Now it's time for step number four, Sack the Duck to the duck. Sack the duck to its mom or something. 
I also gave Drake the Rocky helmet, so Swana's health would definitely be below half. Now it's step five. Retaliate two, electric boogaloo. Downpour takes an air slash and knocks Swana out. Who needs an electric move when you can just sacrifice two of your Pokemon? And now it's time for our sixth and final step, monkey punch. Dharma knocks out Unpheasant with two fire punches and we have our sixth badge. Outside of Dragon Spiral Tower, I can catch Drudigan. He actually gives me quite a scare and lowers most of my team's health, but I am able to catch him, and I name him Dragoon. The seventh gym leader is Bryson, and his Ice-type Pokemon. I'll go ahead and speed up this fight for you, since it goes like this. Yes, I got a crit on Cryonical. No, it did not matter. In Pokemon White, the eighth gym leader is Iris and her dragon Pokemon. I'm expecting that this fight will be a challenging one as well. My plan is to use Blizzard, which misses the first time I try it. After Dragon Dance, Fracture is faster than me, but goes for Dragon Dance again. I try for Blizzard again, and this time it connects, and Oko's Fracture. Iris sends out Drudigan next, and I go for Blizzard, which, of course, misses. Night Slash doesn't hurt me too much though. Of course, I go for Blizzard one more time, and this time it does connect, but doesn't one-hit KO. After another Night Slash, I'm in range to die, but I assume Iris will heal, which she does. Which gives me the opportunity to miss Blizzard again. Two out of five Blizzards hit, you love to see it. I need a safe switch in, so I go to Double Agent, thinking I can just sack her. She hangs on from the Dragon Tail though, and that brings out Dos Blobs. I check my calculations, and I see that Dos Blobs can't die, so I stay in a turn. I take the Night Slash from Drudigan, and then knock its health down to about 25% with Psychic. Dose Blobs is slower, so I can't stay in, so I sadly switch in Double Agent to sack her. Unfortunately, the Rocky Helmet that I gave Double Agent actually kind of screws me here, as it puts Drudigan into Hyper Potion range. But it's finally safe for me to send in my own Drudigan. Iris does use a Hyper Potion, but I use Dragon Claw, which one hit KOs Drudigan. I'm dead to crit, but I don't have a better play, so I decide to stay in. Haxorus goes for a Dragon Dance, as I use a Dragon Claw to knock its health down significantly. I'm not sure if Iris will heal again, so I decide to stay in. She doesn't heal, but I actually get to go first. She clearly picked Dragon Tail, which is a negative priority move. So I knock out Haxorus and get my 8th and final badge. I only have 5 Pokemon left alive, not including my dead duck that I use for flying. That's okay though, because I get one more encounter in Victory Road. There are two D Pokemon that are only found in Victory Road. Durant and Dino. My preference between these two is clear. Dino is a pseudo-legendary, but it's the first form of three evolutions, and I can't evolve it any further. Durant is a single evolution, and therefore has pretty good stats, so Durant is definitely my preference here. I technically don't get to choose between these two. However, Dino is only found on the first floor of Victory Road. So, I load up my Super Repel and walk through the first floor of Victory Road. My Repel runs out, and then I run into Durant. I catch him, and I name him Daughter. I made it through Victory Road and trained my team up as necessary. First, we have Dharma the Darmanitan. She's got a very high attack and decent HP and speed. Armed with physical fire and fighting moves, she's going to be one of the main forces in these fights. Next, we have Dos Blobs the Duosian. He's got the Magic Guard ability to only take damage from direct attacks, a decent special attack, and I gave him Toxic, Protect, and Recover, so he's a Toxic Staller. Next, we have Daughter the Durant, whose nature only affects its two lowest statistics. I EV trained it in defense and speed, and it has a good attack as well. However, its nature is really scary. The attack boost is great, but only having 80% accuracy makes all of my plans completely inconsistent. Next, we have Doe the Deerling. He's really not that strong, so I gave him a moveset that works in one specific circumstance, which you'll see. Then we have Downpour the Duat. Again, not that strong, so functionality is pretty limited. And finally, we have Dragoon the Dredigan. Plus speed and minus defense is a pretty terrible nature. To go with that minus defense is the more defensive ability in Rough Skin. I did EV train him in attack though. By now, you can probably see my main concern. I have three Pokemon that aren't in their final evolution. 
I have two Pokemon that are single evolution lines, which are okay, but they're not as good as any final evolutions could be. My only actual final evolution is Darmanitan. When I make these videos, I always use the Pokemon Showdown damage calculator to plan out each fight and figure out what should happen. Doing that for this challenge was a huge struggle. Honestly, this team just isn't good enough to make any simple strategies. What I ended up with was complicated and inconsistent. Let's see how this goes. I decide to take on Grimsley and his dark Pokemon first. This is my most consistent strategy, and doesn't rely on any Pokemon being level 51. Dharma has an Expert Belt equipped to boost super effective attacks. Because of this, Dharma can outspeed and one-hit KO Scrafty with super power. I know Grimsley will send out Crocodile next, since it has a super effective move against me. Because of the stat decreases from super power, and the Intimidate from Crocodile, I'm now at minus two attack. I'm expecting the Earthquake here, so I go to the one Pokemon that can always survive. Doe. Crocodile should now only see a kill with the move Crunch. So, I can switch back to Dharma, and now all his stat decreases are gone. Crocodile does use Crunch, and thankfully, that crit doesn't matter at all. Dharma now outspeeds and kills with superpower. My attack is minus one stage now, but it doesn't matter. I'm still strong and fast enough to Oko Lipard, and even at minus two, I'm still strong enough to kill Bisharp. I also made sure that even if Grimsley had sent out Lipard last, I would have been able to kill it at minus two attack. That went just as planned. Next, I decide to take on Chantal and her ghost Pokemon. Chantal sends out Kofagrigus first, and I send out Dragoon. Dragoon outspeeds, but can't kill with Crunch. Chantal goes for a Will-O-Wisp, which is perfect since I've equipped Dragoon with a Rossberry. Now, Dragoon can kill with a Crunch. Chantal sends out Golurk next. That is a problem, since my whole plan revolves around Jellicent being out. So, I decide to go for my first risky play. First, I need Golurk to not crit me, which, thankfully, doesn't happen. Then I use Dragon Tail, which forces a random switch. For my plan to work, I need this to be Jellicent and not Chandelure. And it works, it actually works. Now it's time to execute my plan. First, I switch Dragoon out and switch in Doe. Shadow Ball doesn't affect me because of my dual normal type. Jellicent can now only hit me with moves I resist. First, I set up a Sunny Day, which weakens Jellicent's water moves even further. It also now makes me faster due to my Chlorophyll ability. Next, I go for a Leech Seed, which should keep me healthy and also slowly knock down Jellicent's health. Now I'm perfectly safe, so I start a setup using Workup. Workup increases my attack and special attack by one stage, but I only really care about the attack boost. Eventually, I get to plus six attack. The sun has also faded by now, so I use Sunny Day one more time. Since I'm now at plus six attack, one faint attack is more than enough to Oko Jellicent. Now with my plus six attack and my speed boosted by the sun, I'm able to one hit KO the Chandelure and the Golurk with Feint Attack. That got a little crazy in the middle there, but the plan generally worked. Next up, I choose Marshall and his fighting type Pokemon. If you've watched my other videos, you know that Marshall has given me some trouble in the past. Marshall sends out Throw, and I send out Dharma. I gave Dharma a Charcoal, so Flare Blitz is enough to knock out Throw in one hit. I do get recoil damage though. Sock comes out next, but I can't do the same thing again. I switch in Daughter, who can take the incoming Stone Edge. The next part of my plan is subject to RNG. If I miss my next attack because of my Hustle ability, I'm in a really bad place. Also, if Sock crits me, I'm dead. There's a lot of variability here. I go for Iron Head, which is a two-hit KO on Sock, and I get the freaking flinch. That is so unbelievably good for me but I still need to hit my attacks or else I'm back to the same position. Marshall uses a full restore and Iron Head hits again. Marshall uses another full restore and Iron Head hits again. Marshall decides not to use a full restore and Iron Head connects for a fourth straight time to knock out Sock. Next out is Conkeldur. Conkeldur sees a kill on Daughter with Hammer Arm, so I switch into Dose Blobs. Hammer Arm is not very effective, and Dose Blobs has the Eviolite, so he's at no risk to die. 
Conkledor also loses speed by using Hammer Arm, so now Dose Blobs is faster. You also may have noticed during the Grimsley fight that Dose Blobs grew to level 51. Dose Blobs was holding the experience share for that fight. That's important because Psychic is a range to kill Conkledor, and now it's a really, really good range. I use Psychic and it does hit the range. Last is Marshall's Mind Shao. Mind Shao sees a kill only with U-Turn, so I take Dose Blobs out and put in Dharma. The added effect of U-Turn also doesn't work because Mind Shao is the last Pokemon. Mind Shao is super fast, so in preparation for this, I actually gave Dharma speed EVs when I trained him up for the Elite Four. Now he's faster than Mind Shao, kills with Flare Blitz, and can live on the recoil. You can't get me this time, Marshall. Caitlyn is last, and this is the fight that I'm the most worried about. She sends out Reuniclus, and I send out Dragoon. First and foremost, I need Dragoon to not get crit. Dragoon lands his crunch on Reuniclus, and then, luckily, does not get crit. From here, it's a cycle of healing and crunching, healing and crunching, until Caitlyn decides she doesn't care about her Reuniclus anymore. Next out is Sigilyph. Sigilyph sees a kill with either Ice Beam or Psychic. I have one Pokemon who can take either of those moves really well, Daughter. Sigilyph goes for Ice Beam, which is lower damage than Psychic, but does have a chance to freeze. I wasn't able to give Daughter a berry because he needed the black glasses to hit some ranges for this fight. This is so bad. I sat here for like 15 minutes trying to figure out what to do. Eventually, I decided to just stay in, since I have a 20% chance of thawing out. On the first turn, it didn't happen, but Sigliff also missed its Air Slash. I'm in the same position, so I decided to try again. This time, I thawed out and missed, and then Sigliff lands a fatal blow. I miscalculated there, as I definitely thought Daughter would survive that attack but shout out to that hustle ability, which completely ruins any strategy. This could have caused my whole team to spin out, but luckily I do have another team member who can take this fight. Dharma can use Flare Blitz to knock out the Sigilyph, knock out the Gothitelle, and knock out the Masharna. Because of the recoil, this is only possible due to having a safe switch in from Daughter's Death. The Elite Four honestly went better than I expected, but I still don't feel great. The champion fight in this game is kind of weird, because you don't get to do it right away. You get to watch a bunch of cutscenes with awesome DS graphics, and then run around this castle that I guess was just under the Pokemon League the entire time? Anyway, I forgot that you have to fight N and Getsis in this game. I didn't plan or train up my Pokemon for the Getsis fight. For the sake of this video, I'm counting N as the champion fight. Sorry if that's disappointing, but that's just how I'm gonna do this. Plus, it kinda makes me laugh to think that right in the middle of trying to save the world, I'm just like, see ya. The game also forces you to catch one of the legendary Pokemon, but I did not add it to my party. Now, the actual N fight. For the purposes of this video, the champion fight. N sends out Reshiram, and I send out Dragoon. Reshiram starts with a Fusion Flare, which thankfully doesn't do too much damage. My Dragon Claw almost knocks out Reshiram though. N heals up, and I use another Dragon Claw to get it back down in health. Then, Reshiram uses Hyper Beam to kill Dragoon. I'm not sure why I didn't see that. So, I send out Dharma, who can kill Reshiram as it rests from using Hyper Beam. Next out is Karakosta, so I switch to Doe. Luckily, Doe avoids the Stone Edge from Karakosta. Not so lucky, Doe can't quite kill Karakosta with Grass Knot, and then gets knocked out from Stone Edge. I'm clearly not in the right headspace. I'm not making good plays during this fight. I send in Downpour for his first action of the Elite Four. I don't know if N will heal up, but I use Aqua Jet anyway, which knocks out Karakosta. Kling Clang comes out next, and I need to get Dharma in. Luckily, none of Kling Clang's attacks can kill Dharma, so I switch her right in. Kling Clang just lowers Dharma's special defense, and Dharma knocks out Kling Clang with a Fire Punch on the next turn. Archaeops comes out next, but I need to save Dharma's health for later in the fight. Downpour can kill Archaeops, but if I switch to Downpour right away, it's not going to work. So, I have to sacrifice something. Also, you may see that Daughter looks alive and well. N heals all your Pokemon before his fight, so don't worry, I won't be using him. 
My one alive and sacrificable Pokemon is Dos Blobs, so I send him in. He takes a Stone Edge from Archeops and dies. Now I can safely switch in Downpour. I do still need to dodge one crit though. Luckily, I do, and Downpour kills Archeops with Surf. Zoroark is next, and I need to get Dharma back in. Downpour makes the ultimate sacrifice, but not before getting an Aqua Jet in first. Downpour faints, and I can bring Dharma in safely. Dharma launches a Fire Punch, which kills Zoroark. This is it. My last Pokemon versus N's last Pokemon. I do like the matchup here, though. Dharma is faster, and knocks out Vanillux with one Fire Punch. And, just like that, the champion has been defeated. This challenge ended up being way tougher than I expected. Working with a lot of unevolved Pokemon was really challenging. In the end, Dharma the Dermanitan was absolutely the savior of the run. Without her, who even knows if this would be possible? Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm continuing to work my way through the alphabet in what I'm calling Letter Locks. A run using only E Pokemon would be next, but I'll be putting out some other Pokemon Nuzlocke content as well. If you haven't already, it would be awesome if you subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to leave a comment and tell me what kind of run you'd like me to do. This has been a quick Nuzlocke using only D Pokemon. As always, thank you so much for watching.